Hello, welcome back to that Josh James show podcast for the geezers and their birds. I'm Josh James, stand up comedian. As ever, I'm joined by my right hand man, it's Chrissy White, aka White Boy, Romford's number one podcaster. What's happening, mate? What's happening, bruv? You good? What are you saying? What are you saying? What are you saying? What are you saying? Now, what are you saying? What are you saying? <laughs> what are you saying? What are you saying, man? What are you saying, man? I'm good, mate. I'm good. <laughs> I've had, mate, I've been flat out last few days. I've had four gigs in four days. How's the stand-up com- comedy going? Stand-up comedy is going uh, good. I'll be completely honest. You played me your set on the way up here from last night. My new stuff. I thought it was brilliant. Yeah. Some bangers. Yeah, it didn't laugh much, but that's... Yeah, but I couldn't really hear it, but I got the content. And yeah, I did laugh. Mate, you know I'm not a big laugher. Yeah. Ah, that's, that's I'm like, more about, yes, that's really clever. That's what people say when they don't find it funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was like everyone else was laughing. It's fine. No, yeah. I thought it was brilliant, mate. You got some good bits. You know what it's like for me? It's all about the poise and the confidence, mm. the stage presence. Do I have the poise? If you seem comfortable, yep. I feel comfortable. Yep. While I'm watching it. That's after battle, mate. And you sounded very comfortable. Yeah, I'm very comfortable. And that makes half the battle for me. I'm very loose when I'm on stage now. But mm. that can also be bad because then sometimes you come out of things and you're like, whoa, I don't yeah. you say that. Yeah. Or you're just okay. trying to get reaction. Too loose. Too loose. You could be a bit too loose. And actually I had it um I think I had it a bit on Thursday when I was hosting. I was hosting the Blackout up the creek, which was wild by the way. Mm. It was mad. Great venue, isn't it? And, um, oh, mate, fantastic venue. And if you want a fun show to go watch, go watch The Blackout. Um, I mean, we spoke about it tons of times before on on this podcast, but it's basically loads about 20 new acts get up and they've got to get through five minutes of comedy without getting you know, the cards put up and gold yeah, yeah. off. It can be brutal, mm. you know? And five it was, minutes. It was really brutal for, for, for some of them on Thursday. <laughs> um, Bless them. Yeah. But I try, listen, I try and go with like a bit of a coach mentality before I do the thing. Because I remember when I used to do them gong shows mm. and I'd be like, ah, oh, this host is a bit of a prick. It's making it harder. So you were hosting this time? Because really, when you're hosting a gong show, mm. you've got to be a little bit nasty because if they're shit, you're supposed to sort of almost... Are you the one doing the gonging? No, I'm the host. Yeah, so who's, who's in charge? I'm like the ringmaster. I'm like the Eddie Hearn and they're the fighters. You know what I mean? <laughs> Okay. That's me. You are Eddie Hearn, aren't you? I am Eddie Hearn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I thought you were. Yeah. Um, but that's what I'm supposed to do. And I'll, I'll do it a little bit, but not too much. But before I go up there, I go, look, for some of you tonight, it's going to go really well. For others of you, it ain't going to go too nice. well. It's like you're giving an assembly. Yeah. But yeah. I say, listen, in this game, we win or we learn. You know, I go proper. Nice. Yeah, yeah. I go, we win or yeah, we learn. Yeah. So tonight, some of you are going to really feel that buzz of, yeah, I got through that five minutes. One of you's going to win it. You're going to be buzzing. But for those of you that don't get through the five minutes, you get the video, you look at it back, you see what works, you see what don't. This game, a lot of it is trial and error. Nice. You know? Yeah, yeah. Dave Chappelle didn't get up there in his first 10 gigs and weren't absolutely roofing gigs. No, he didn't. No. And no, no comedian gets up there and they're great straight away. No. It really is... Um, it, it, uh, mate, so largely is trial and error. Of course, and like you seeing just what said works, about you being comfortable on stage, that comes from hundreds and hundreds of hours yeah. of being on stage. And dying as well. Yeah. And uh, uh, the worst deaths you've ever seen in your life. Thinking, yeah. Oh my God, are you? <laughs> that was humiliating. Yeah. When you're going to get back up there and do it again. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And look, that's why you've got to respect it. You got to respect it, and that's why I respect any comedian that gets up there and does does it time and time again. Mm. I always used to think I was a bit of a pussy before I started stand up. I always thought I was a quitter, right. and stand up actually has taught me that I'm not a quitter. No. If I've got something that I love and I'm passionate about, then I, there's nothing you can say to me You're until I'm to gonna, go through the pain until I reach that goal. You know mm. what I mean? Nice. Um, so yeah, so and that's what I try and teach them. Um, and then whenever they come off. Everyone, when they come off, I make sure I give them a little spud, shake their hand. Mm. Well done, mate. If they don't do well, I go, don't worry, a bit of a funny audience tonight. Make sure you get the video, make sure you watch it back. And I will say to them, especially if it don't go well for them, come, I want to see you here again in six months. Nice. I want to see you back here. Encouragement, mate. Yeah. Goes a long way. Goes I mean, the, way. I do say that even to some of the people that should definitely quit doing it. You know what I mean? So I, I, I offer advice. Now, is that harmful? 
it is probably harmful, but I want to look like a nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> you know At what I mean? At all costs. At all costs. <laughs> I want them, listen, even if I, if, even if I think you're going down the wrong road in life here, you're absolutely wasting your time. Yeah. You'll tell and them to gonna waste another six months of their life. Yeah, and I think it's going to be detrimental, actually, for your life if you carry on doing this. Yeah. But I want them so badly to think, he's a nice geezer, yeah. <laughs> that I will give them advice. You and, will ruin their life yeah, yeah, to yeah. make you look, yourself to, look good. To make me feel good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Brilliant, pathetic, mate. I love the honesty. Pathetic, really. Not at all. But I just try and be encouraging. So many times I've had MCs when I'm starting out and I think like you made that harder yeah. than what it should have been. Yeah. I'm just trying to offer a bit of encouragement, you know? I feel like that's bitterness from them MCs. Uh, well, maybe for some of them, but then some of them for these gong shows, they're told, listen. Be brutal. Be brutal. Mm. You know, whereas I've, I've not really, I've not massively got that in me, man. You know what I mean? No, you're a nice person. Like I listen, I, I sometimes like to be a bit brutal, take the piss, but, I know when to cut it off, you know. Yeah, of course, there's a difference between being funny and being nasty. I mean, I, I even some, see it with some experienced acts. They'll go up there and they'll really rinse someone. And I think, yeah, do it for a few times. But then after a while, it's just not. Yes, yeah, even if a bully. Even if people are laughing, I think, come on, man, like just uh, you've done you've done it now. It's like kicking someone yeah, yeah, yeah. on the floor when they're on the, I mean, I've done that before, but, but I've, <laughs> It was the the only way you could ever get a strike yeah. in. Stay down, <laughs> Mark. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> to be fair, when I think about fights with me and my mates, Dad, I'm usually the boot guy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just to say that I've done something. Yeah, yeah. But Did you see me? Yeah, yeah. Not, not. <laughs> just on their ankles. At that, you mug. Yeah, no, actually, I've. I've, 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 I've that no, never happened. That's but, never happened. No. I wouldn't do that. But that's what it's like, you know. Kick it like kicking someone when they're down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not just nastiness, mate. No need for it. Yeah. But um, yeah, and then I had, I supported Laura Smith. Sister friend of, of, friend of the pod. Mate, absolute. Not legend just a of friend, the game. Legend of the game. Sister of the pod. And you know what? I'm watching her over the weekend. You, you and, mentioned this. Uh, I watched her over the weekend. Chelmsford Theatre two nights and I supported her. And I'm going to chuck it out there. And she ain't going to like me saying this. But I think Laura Smith is the best female comedian in the UK. I think I'd agree. I just, I just don't think there's any. I, I mean, listen, comedy's subjective, right? Mm. And something that I find funny, you won't find funny if you're listening, or vice versa. And that's why you can never really look at a comedian and go, "Oh, he's shit," because yeah, he's shit for you. Yeah, you don't like him, but there's, there's audiences for everything. Mm. But in my opinion, Laura Smith is the best female comedian working in the UK today, and I don't say that lightly because I've always rated her. I've always and listen, maybe I'm massively biased because she's one of my best mates. Right? Yeah. But I'm watching her on Saturday No, but you're night. also a bit of a comedy connoisseur. Well, I'm a student of the game. Yeah. You so know? You, know, you know what to look for. And, I, and actually, I will look at it critically because I think, right, well, how can I help her? And what can I say that I think could add? I'm and watching, no I'm watching her on Saturday. I'm just like, <laughs> this, I, 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 honestly, I'm just, just like, this is unbelievable. Yeah. Every, just like punchlines bang bang nothing bang. but bangers just no rest up no no respite you mm. know um and she goes an hour she goes she goes an hour yeah, yeah. Uh, honestly I, I watched on saturday and i'm just like oh God, i'm i was a bit speechless actually it's been set high how good she was and it set the bar for when i eventually do an hour show i'm like i went home on saturday night i stayed up to two in the morning writing yeah yeah, yeah because yeah. i'm like not not i'm like oh i've I've got to be as good as Laura. I think I'm good at what I do, but when I look at Laura, I think you are a star, mm. you know? Yeah, well, that's, she's, she's been an inspiration for you, mate, after that show, for you to go back and start writing. Yeah. That's a good attitude. But I just watched it and I'm like, that's what an hour of stand-up is. Yeah. You know? Well, I'm really looking forward to going. She got any tickets left? Uh, yeah, she's Surely doing, she be she's doing Hack the Empire, so maybe we'll go. I, I'll tell you what. I'm up for it. Why don't we go? We take the girls. Take the girls. Yeah. Perfect. She said she'd get me a few comps. So, um, yeah, we'll, cut, we'll take them to the Hackney Empire one. And if you are, uh, she's on tour until well, later this year. So if you're listening to this, Laura Smith show, Living My Best Life. If you want to see the best female comedian working in the UK today. And actually, I probably shouldn't even say best female comedian. 
I mean, in my mind, that's that's what she is. But just best comedian, one yeah. of the top comedians. Mm. She will be in ten years' time. Everyone will know Laura Smith's name. Just hundred percent. I've nice. no doubt about that in my mind. She will be. She'll be to. She'll be like to what Mickey Flanagan is to people like us. Nice. People, best of luck, Laura. Yeah, people will be like Mickey Flanagan, Laura Smith. She's that good, man. Nice. Unbelievable. Funny enough, when we had her on the podcast, my dad's like, who you got on? And I'm like, oh, this lady sent her, sent him a couple. I just sent her him her name. And she, he rung me up like, oh, yeah, she's really funny. Like, yeah, being yeah. on YouTube looking. Well, the thing is with Laura, right, is, I mean, when we're doing an audience, there's a probably big majority of women, right? Mm. But um, Her crowd. Yeah. Yeah from what i see from from that gig but but what, what's great about her is even geezers like us mm. would be into her yeah you know what i mean yeah no, she I'm, can I'm have it with but you it. could bring her down the pub with the boys she'll, oh yeah of course she would she'll be she'll be giving it you yeah. know she'll be giving as good as she gets yeah so but i mean there was one little mishap that i done obviously laura she, i've lost a few years i mean why she's massively inspirational as well is because she went through cancer for the last yeah, few years cancer survivor yeah and um obviously you know we're gigging in chelmsford you know locally you know people call it chelmo <laughs> so on my story i went to write chelmo with laura smith tonight i got the l didn't i i read chemo with laura smith tonight <laughs> Just, Mate, that is such a bad typo. Ah, uh, chemo, chemo with Laura Smith. <laughs> oh my god! And I was like, I should take that down. She was like, No, that's funny. Then yeah. people message me going, Oh, got a bit dark there, aren't you, Jamesy? I'm like, Nah, <laughs> that's not me trying to be a dark, edgy comedian. That's just me being illiterate. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's dyslexic, it's mate. Dyslexia. <laughs> yeah, that's not. Oh, brilliant. Oh, mate, couldn't believe it. Chemo. Yeah, mate. Well, look, it's been. Then a someone big... messaged me. Chelmo therapy. <laughs> <laughs> Doing a bit of Chelmo therapy. Yeah. So, yeah, mate, um, well, look, it's been a big week for both of us. Yeah. Stand up comedy. I got to watch the GOAT practice on Thursday night. You did not been to watch me yet. Yeah, you? mate. It was so good. It <laughs> um, was so good. You went to see Dave Chappelle, didn't you? I did, mate. Yeah. So I'm flicking through Instagram on Wednesday night. Tickets go on sale tomorrow morning. Meaning, sorry, it was the Tuesday I saw the uh, advert. Yeah. They go on sale tomorrow at 10 o'clock. I'm like, oh my God, I'm going. Right. So I tried to get us both one. I could only get one. Well, I like, you built me up and you said, I said, mate, you got to go. I said, but I'm I'm working Thursday night. I can't night. go. And I'm like, I can't go to and a And then you build me up about own. 20 minutes late and you're like, I can only get one ticket. I said, yeah, well, I can't go, mate. I'm working. And he was like, well, what I was going to do is buy you one. And then, and then you persuade you to come. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I got through. It would only give me one ticket. Uh, and I'm like, can I go to a comedy show on my own? 100% you can. All right. Turns out you can. I met a lovely man from Beirut in the uh, in the queue. We hit it off. They locked all your phones up. Did he go in on his own as well? He did, mate. Yeah, he did. Nice. He was Where's Beirut? Own. Like a uh, war zone. Proper war zone. Beirut, I've heard that. Yeah, is uh, is it like Baghdad? Beirut, is it what? Is it in the Middle East? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beirut, I've heard of it. Yeah. He was surprisingly chipper for a man who grew up in a war zone. Really? Yeah, so yeah. what's he like, Re Iraqi? Or really what? nice chap. Anyway, we're not talking about, I'm just saying. Okay. I got chatting, I was on my own. What was his name? Toop. Toop. Shout out Toop. Shout out Toop. Yeah, maybe Toops. Man like Toop. Yeah, man like Toops. Lebanon. Lebanon, Lebanon. Okay. there you go. Uh, yeah, not, my geography's not great in that yeah, part of the no, world. Yeah, no, sorry. So to anyone in the Middle East, we've just yeah, offended so, there by saying it's in Iraq. Yeah, really yeah. Really sorry. Do apologise. Um, Spelling's not the best. Geography's, geography's not, not the good. best. Yeah. Unless it's, you know, when it's outside the M25. So. Yeah, yeah. Inside the M25, actually saying that, mate, it's basically just like the East London surrounding area that yeah. I'm pretty good at. I mean, we know sort of Romford to Rayleigh, really. Yeah. I'm not bad in around Oldham and Rochdale as well. I know where that lot is. Rochdale? Yeah, yeah. It's where my missus is from. So anyway, I've... Um, Got the ticket, yep. standing in the queue, gone up there on my own and uh, walked in. And funny enough, you mentioned Laura Smith. So there's two screens either side of the stage and it's like scrolling past all the people that are going to be performing. And I'm like, Laura Smith, friend of the pod. Mm. I was like, brilliant, really want to see that yeah. show. And then a couple warm-up acts and then the goat comes out. He's 
eight feet away from me. And I was So what how many rows back were you? I was in the fourth row. Fourth row. Yeah. How central? Mid left. Uh, it was great seats. Because mate, we went to see him at the O2, which is he's great, but yeah. listen, watching him in that uh, so you went to see him at Leicester Square Theatre, which is about what a little intimate, about four hundred. About four hundred people. Literally, where that camera is, Dave Chappelle was sitting on a stall, really? and I'm sitting here. It was incredible. Yeah, I loved it. Great jokes, obviously. So he's just put a special out, so he's practicing, right? He's doing work in progress, and um, the show was called The Process, and uh, you could tell like he had some bits written like that he's working on, mm. and then for the last half hour he was just sort of fucking around. You know what I mean? And uh, just a great show yeah just he's so good uh, he's he's the best i think he's the best the best ever i would say so yeah but have you watched people like richard Pryor? i've seen them george carlin so like even like eddie murphy yeah back in the day them specials because i know a lot of people say that that's the best stand-up special yeah. ever it's not aged well mate the subject matter is tough to watch there's loads of stuff in there that's just so not pc that it's like I, yeah, I but don't, if Chappelle is no, not but PC. I'm not considering myself PC. What I'm saying is, it's sort of it rubs off on you. You're like, wow, that is shocking to hear. You know what I mean? Chappelle does it in a way where it's not shocking. You know what I mean? But a lot of people dis listen. Yeah, I'm yeah, with yeah. you. I've, but a lot I, of people I, I would disagree with. I that. just think he's fantastic. All I'm saying is, when you go back to them ones from like the '80s, it's like, mate, you're not allowed to say that. You know what I mean? Yeah. But uh, yeah, it was it was a brilliant show. Uh, I really enjoyed it, and. Um, looking forward to hearing the special and seeing seeing what made it and knowing that I was sort of part of that process. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah. <laughs> taking you know credit I mean? for it. No, I'm not taking any credit. It's just that I'm saying like, yeah. uh, I was there, you know what I mean? Oh, he do, he done that joke in front of me and that made it. That would be nice to see. Listen, it's great seeing a fully formed show, right? Yeah. But often when you, because I've been to watch a lot of uh, work in progresses like Mickey Flanagan, Kevin Bridges, uh, Aziz, Kevin Aziz Bridges. Ansari, right? Mm. And it's a, it's amazing watching their fully formed show. But when you are, you're often going to go see him at the O2. Now the O2 is not great for comedy, man. Yeah, like it's obviously great for the comedian financial. Great sense. for ticket sales, yeah. yeah. And actually, it's quite nice going to the O2. It's quite a nice night out. Um, but in terms of actually what comedy's about, the O2's not great. You know, doing no. arenas, it's not great for stand-up comedy. You want a more close, intimate gig. Yeah, I think that Leicester Square Theatre is perfect for stand-up. Yeah, it's great, yeah. So actually going to watch the Work in Progress shows is, is great. Yeah, no, mate, I, it was a great time. It was a great time. Really, really enjoyed it, mate. Well, I'm buzzing. I'm buzzing that you went. Yeah, and funny enough, you're talking about financially um, financially good for the for the comedian. 125 quid. Really? I ended up paying 145. So... 400 people, it's 50 grand. He literally came off of the, he was like, I've just literally just landed. So he's like, right, I'm gonna go to London in two days, put that on Instagram, sold out in 10 minutes. He did Thursday, Friday, one show, Saturday, Sunday, two shows a day. So he'd done a 7.30 and a 9.30. And then like, what, probably flew home. Mm. That ain't a bad long weekend's work, is it, mate? It's decent, yeah. To practice. He earned that money. He often does that. He often comes over to London when he's working on shows. Yeah. So do these work in progress well, look, shows. He's which probably, like... obviously he knows that his special is going to be internationally received. Yeah, of course. So he needs to know what works in different parts of the world. Imagine doing that though, like literally just announcing a show like that. Bang. Goes sold in five out. minutes. Yeah. Yeah. That's power. That's power, man. Yeah. And uh, from what I saw, he really enjoyed himself. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Smoking cigarettes. I mean, why would you well. not? He's a multi-millionaire. Yeah, he's seen as the greatest comedian mm. of this era. He obviously loves doing it. And I mean, I do. I mean, listen, like, as I've said already, comedy is subjective. Not everyone loves Chappelle. Some people find him really offensive. Some people don't agree with the things he comes out with. Um, in in my opinion, there are some real Premier League comedians. You know, you got your Chris Rocks. You got your Kevin Bridges. You've got your Kevin Hart. I, I, uh, yeah, I mean, think about it though. It's not for me, but he's I mean, a huge comedian. Kevin mate. Hart is financially, he's the biggest ticket selling oh, no. comedian in the world. There you go. And you don't get that. But, you don't get that reason if you're not popular. Yeah, but he's not the best. No, definitely not. 
Chappelle. Chappelle for me, for me anyway. You've got them Premier League comedians. Then you've got Chappelle, who was in just like a league of his own. Yeah, yeah. He just sits above everyone. That's my opinion. Some people might see it differently. Well, but... I heard Chris Rock tell a story. I think it was Kevin Hart told the story. Him and Chris Rock are sitting at the back of a comedy club. They've got all their stuff that they're working on. Yeah. Dave Chappelle comes up and does forty-five minutes, and Kevin Hart and Chris Rock just both screwed up what they had and threw it away and started yeah. again. So like, it, it, that's not good enough. It's not good enough. If that's out there. What I'm doing isn't good enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Just another level. Yeah. And um, thing you're saying about people find them offensive. What I is they're just jokes. They're just jokes. You know what I mean? I feel like getting offended by something on the internet or on Netflix, it's like purposefully stepping in dog shit when you could have walked around it. Yeah, yeah, but don't watch it. Don't watch it. But Play devil's advocate for now. When I watch one of his specials, I totally agree with you. They're just jokes. But I'll, I sometimes think the amount of jokes that you say on one topic. So <laughs> I'm up for, I'm up for, that's a joke, yeah? Yeah. And, but there, there was one special uh, that Chappelle done, which was, it was largely all on trans people. Yeah. And I think, listen, I'm all for, you know, everyone should have jokes made about them three mm. or four jokes on that topic when it's when it's, it's all about an hour out that of an hour one special. community i do yeah. think it that's why people think it looks like a bit more of an attack yeah but you know what i mean in his you've defense, got to spread that you've got to spread the in, the in his defense he says in that special he's like look i just i'm sorry but i just can't stop writing jokes about these people yeah because it's a hilarious predicament to be in right mm. so sort of i get what you're saying pepper everyone with it rather than just focusing on one thing. Yeah, and that's 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 one thing I'd say. But listen, who might say that about Chappelle? You know what I mean? He's, yeah, yeah, Chappelle's the guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Can't even write Chelmo properly. You know what <laughs> I mean? <laughs> he's a, Chemo with he's a fantastic, that. legendary, comedic writer. Mm. I don't even know. I can't see that there's not an L in Chelmo. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yeah. And that's one thing that I pride myself on is that I'm a good writer. But you can't spell. But I'm not a great speller. Okay. You know, there's... Oh, mate, I'd love to see what you write down. No, no, I'm all right. I'm, I'm a real just... stickler for grammar and spelling. Oh, yeah. Do you know, know what it is? I'm just a bit like, blah, 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 you know, my mind, blah, 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 bang, you know. Scatty, write it down. It's a bit scatty, yeah, scatterbrain, but... Yeah, my handwriting isn't great, though. I've done all my step work, like, when I was working on myself in recovery, I've done all my step work with a pen mm. rather than typing it because there's power in it. When it comes directly from your hand onto the paper, there's power in that. There's like a disconnect when you type it. And my handwriting is atrocious. Yeah. I think part of it though is because I'm trying to get it out quick. So I'm writing as fast as I can because I don't want to forget what I'm thinking. I was doing a gig the other day at the blackout and uh, Ray writes down uh, the names on a piece of paper. And the last one, I see it says Abdul and the, like, I can't read his handwriting for the oh, second thing. So I wrote Abdul, uh, Blah, blah, blah. What? Is that what he said? Yeah. Well, no, no, not blah, blah, blah. Because that would have been... You said it wrong. That would have been deeply racist. Because yeah. <laughs> he was like, Muslim Mate, boy. What you said, as soon as you said Abdul, I was like, oh, no. No, no, but I'm just saying, for, I'm saying like as an example, blah, blah, blah. I can't remember what his name, second name was. Yeah. But it was Abdul. I didn't go, Abdul, blah, 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 blah. Blah, blah, blah. 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 I didn't go, Abdul, finger me jig. <laughs> Could you imagine? Yeah, yeah. Abdul, sorry, mate. I can't yeah. pronounce that. I think maybe it's worse if you try and pronounce it. But anyway, it. I come up. And he goes, got my second name wrong, man. Like in front of everyone. I was like, sorry, mate, it's the handwriting. He goes, no, it's cool, man. You're from Essex. <laughs> I come off took his shot. And I laughed. I'm like, what's that supposed to be? <laughs> no, no, no. Was, uh, he took his shot. It was a good one and all. He yeah. had to. Come I mean. up to me after. And I was thinking, oh, I was like, I really should have found him. And, but I, I wanted to try and find him and check his name. But then I got called up to go on. But that, yeah. But then uh, he come up to me after, he goes, oh, I come watch you with Mo about six months ago and we had a roast back and forth and it inspired me to get into comedy. Oh, really? I was like, oh, that's really nice, man. How'd he do? Um, I can't remember that back and forth I had with him at that show, uh, supporting Mo. But he done really well. Nice. Yeah, he really well. He was full of confidence and, uh, um, yeah, he was bullshy, man. Nice. Like, like really, really bullshy. <laughs> But I'm, like, I'm looking at him like oh, six months. You got that amount of confidence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Give it time. He just give. He just really give it. Good. Um, but some audiences are going. I would say let's look out for him. But you can't remember his can't name. Can't remember so. uh, his second name. But um, 
yeah, it was a lot of, a lot of jokes about him being Muslim and stuff like that. And uh, he's funny, man. He's done really well. Nice. So, uh, yeah, but the question I had for you today was, I want you to put a dream stand-up comedy lineup together. Yeah. Now, we are the rules. Okay. You need one host, mm -hmm. one MC, one opener. Then in the middle, so usually our comedy night runs, guys and girls, if you ain't been to one recently, you have a host, you have one opener, you have a break, you have sort of two middles, two 10 minute middles in newer acts usually mm. in the middle, you have a break, then you have a headliner. So, but what I want from White Boy today is I want a host of a dream lineup, mm. an opener. I want one middle who doesn't do stand up comedy mm. for someone you just think is hilarious. Okay. And I want one headliner. Right. So we start with a host. Chris Rock's hosting. Chris Rock's hosting. <laughs> okay, nice. Right. Yeah. And then for my opening acts, I mean, this is a guy. At... Why Chris Rock hosting? Because he's a great host. Okay, very and quick. And he's, he's a funny comedian. He's a, yeah. good, he's a good host. Right? Yeah. For my opener. Now, this guy is opening up for some real big comedians at the minute. Okay. Yeah. He's up and coming. Okay. He's called Josh James. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen this guy in action opening. Wait, he's, I can't follow Chris he's Rock. 20 minutes is tight. Okay. Right? <laughs> mate, mate, I weren't, I weren't expecting that. Right. But I really appreciate that yeah, because yeah. so many times I go to my missus, oh, who's your favourite comedian? And she go, um, Mickey Flanagan. Oh, she or she go, you oh, I really like Kevin Bridges. And I'll be like, mate, You're married to Josh James. Go, oh, no, you're, of course. Yeah, you're as well. You're really fun. Yeah, you're great. I bet she, to I bet Laura she Smith, that she's great. I'm like, yeah, okay, yeah, but what that one thing sitting right in front of you that give you your newborn son. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's, not getting, she's not getting another kid. She's one and done. Okay. So, so Chris Josh Rock James. Hosting, Josh James opening. I've heard good things about this young kid. No, he's good. He's is good. He good, yeah. He's good, yeah. He is good. Any um, any any flaws you reckon he's got or he's perfect. He's absolutely perfect. Really? Yeah. Okay. Just just a just a dear, dear sweetheart of a man. Sweetheart of a yeah. okay. And uh anything about good for looking, my, good, for my is very good, famous is he good? celebrity middle. Is Josh James good looking? Uh, actually you are. So okay. when we was doing them top fives in Portugal, yeah? Yeah. And yeah. the plum ended up ahead of you. Then the following day, both of you were standing in the swimming pool. And I was like, oh no, James is much better looking than the plum. It was sort of from that moment, I was like, you know what? I think you are handsome. I don't really look at, at men and like, nah. rate them. You no, know I, mean? oh, I do. I do that quite. You do? Yeah, yeah, I do yeah. yeah. I but do yeah, no, nah. handsome chap. Handsome chap. Thanks very much. So you've opened up, you've done a nice tight 20. Then little intermission. And then we need a, a celebrity coming out who's not a comedian. Yep. I just thought, what a great person to bring out with Chris Rock hosting. Will Smith. Whoa. Yeah. Will Smith comes out, says his piece. Right. right? Okay. But you think he's funny? You think he's no, gonna no, no, I'm just saying, I just think it would be great for Chris Rock to be hosting. And then for Will Smith to come out and in the just middle. what so that he could watch Will Smith die up there. Exactly, he could watch him die. Up, maybe start sending for Chris Rock. Who knows? Because you know Chris Rock's probably sent for Will when he's opening comments. Yeah, because that's his whole shtick now. Green right? Room's going to be tasty, exactly, man. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And uh, Will comes out, does his thing, says whatever he says, and then for my headliner, mate, it's the goat. Chappelle comes out. Chappelle comes out and comments on the whole thing that just happened before. Wow. So we've got, let's just recap. We've got Chris Rock hosting. We've got me opening. Yeah. We've got Will Smith in the middle. <laughs> and we've got Dave Chappelle. Headlining. Headlining. That's and like, commenting on what the fuck just happened. That's like a UTC line up there, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> me as a token white guy, isn't it? <laughs> I'm the one that's getting booked for diversity. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Because uh, usually it's 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 me, Mo, Bubba Tunde, yeah. K Curd. Yeah. You are the token white guy. Yeah, but I love that, man. I love it too. Gonna be with all them white people. Boring, isn't it? No. Yeah, don't want that at all. Yeah, so that would be my dream stand up lineup, mate. Obviously, if you didn't say that you wanted a celebrity that's not a comedian, I wouldn't have thrown Will Smith in there. But okay. if you would have said just another com another comedian, someone who I think is brilliant, I would have said, um, yeah, that guy you was talking about, Scottish guy. 
Kevin, Kevin Bridges. Bridges. Okay. He makes me laugh. Yeah. yeah. Just his cadence, the way he's, he emphasises words just cracks me up. Cadence, but mate, the, the, the jokes are just... Yeah, the jokes are banging. Have you seen the one where he's talking about Never. smoking a PlayStation? Where he's got his vape plugged into his PlayStation yeah. for charging <laughs> <laughs> Or give me a quid or you're getting stabbed. Yeah, that, yeah. That one's fantastic. In the economic crisis. <laughs> yeah. Well, that wasn't a very good... Yeah, no, terrible. Very... Sorry. <laughs> But yeah, at yeah. least I've tried to copy his accent yeah, and not, yeah. you know, Abdul's who I was talking about yeah, earlier. Yeah, do you no, know what exactly. I mean? Yeah, yeah. I can get away with copying Kevin's accent. Of course you can. You know, I can do anyone why I can do their accent. Yeah, yeah. Stay in your lane, son. Otherwise. Yeah, so what would be your dream stand up um, <laughs> stand up lineup? Um so thanks for putting me in yours, by the way. I, I mean, it was a no brainer. That's goes to show I've got the right man sitting next to yeah. me. It's a no brainer. If there's anyone I want to see succeed in comedy, it's you. Okay. For completely unselfish reasons. <laughs> For completely selfish reasons. No, it's really Because you know if I make it, you're coming with me, son. Yeah, yeah but it's, I, mean, I just, I know how you know, works. And yeah, I know yeah, how much yeah. you love it. I know yeah, how much you love it. But you, you also know you'd be earning a few more quid here. I mean, bonus. <laughs> um, so, I've, I've uh, yeah. So, so for the host, mm. um, now it needs to be someone that just sets the mood. Um, who is a fantastic host and just gets people in that vibe, mm. people that someone loves, uh, I'd go for Mo Gilligan. Standard. Standard, mate. I mean, listen, Mo has just got, uh, I think what Mo's, mate, he's just got more charisma, I think, than, uh, I could think of two people in my life that I've met, I think you've got the most charisma I think I've ever met. Go on. And it's Mo Gilligan. Yeah. And actually, funnily enough, one of our mates, the big fat rich one that lives in Dubai, yeah. he reminds me of a white Mo Gilligan. Okay. But just the amount of charisma that they've got. Yeah. Like Mo, for example, right? He could go have it with the geezers down the pub. He can also be... He can have it in the boardroom. He could also go cut it with the road men in Peckham. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. He's just got this thing, like our mate, the big fat rich one in Dubai, he can be anyone for anything. Yeah. And he doesn't really change himself that much, but he just not, honestly, like I never. Yeah, it's a skill. It's a skill, mate. Yeah. It is a, he's a, he's a real skill. It's. And you know what you were saying about getting everyone at it. So when he comes out and he's like, DJ, drop the tune. And he does his little yeah. moves and that. It just gets everyone, gets everyone happy. I come and watch him doing work in progress with you warming up. Yeah. And the place was roaring, mate. Mm. It was roaring. Yeah. He's, he's very good. Yeah. He's, so yeah, he's good choice. Unbelievable. And do you know what? When um when obviously he made it through social media, didn't he, Mo? Mm. And I remember my mate got me tickets, he was working on the latest show. And I'm like, I'm I'm really interested to see this because he's made it through. I mean, I knew that he'd done stand up for years, but then I knew he'd sort of made, you know, really blown up through the social media. So was and this he, before the UTC days? No, no, it was with UTC the whole no, time. No, you. Uh, before I'd sign with UTC. Before you'd yeah. sign, that's yeah, what I meant. I'll tell you a funny story, actually, about bumping into Gelly in the groom room after. Yeah. I was like, you are right, mate? I'm Josh James. I'm a stand-up comedian. I really love, like, if you could watch my set, blah, blah, blah. Oh, fanboy. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, just, yeah. just like, just Beggy. like, listen. A bit beggar, yeah, but just... <laughs> like, this, listen to my mixtape. But just, yeah, listen to my... <laughs> <one of them. laughs> yeah. Listen to my mixtape. I've got Dr. mad Dre. bars. <laughs> yeah. I'm listen, listen, I'm like, I'm like the Essex M&M. Yeah, yeah. See yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> Or what do I call myself? I call myself UT's version of Jack Harlow. You know what I mean? Yeah, okay. I'm that white boy. Mad swag. Mad swag. <laughs> do you know what I mean? I'm vanilla, baby. You know what it is? <laughs> I am, Chewing, by the way. I'm more Jack, I'm more Jack Harlow than I am Eminem. M &M. mm. But anyway, I went to watch the latest show and I'm, as a fan of Mo, right? But I'm going there watching it thinking, wow, like he's gone from social media to having his own show on Channel 4, like, How's he going to cope? I'm thinking maybe he's going to be a bit out of his depth. You know what mm. I mean? Just because. Just curious. Yeah, just curious. I watched it within the first five, 10 minutes, even before the cameras were rolling. I'm like, oh no, this geezer's a real deal. Yeah. This geezer's a star. Actually, not just a real deal. This geezer is a star. Yeah, yeah, he's got it. Just charisma coming out of his. Ear rolls. Ear rolls everywhere. He's Nose charisma. Rolls. He's coming out of him. Mm. Yeah. Right? He's then bantering with the audience. Uh, mate, honestly, just. That's a that's a host, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, definitely. And it's just no surprise to me now that he's just just going from strength to strength and was on a Tonight Show the other day. Yeah, love love seeing that. Yeah, I'm just there with like, Jimmy yeah, Fallon. yeah, yeah. You're you've you've just got it, mate. Yes, for a reason. 
Um, opener, I would have Shane Gillis. Great comedian. Great comedian. Probably the best of the new era of comedians American in America. Comedians. Yeah, yeah. I'll if you've that. not watched him, if you don't know who he is, because uh, a lot of our guys have listened to this. They're British guys, aren't they? They're probably yeah. only into the British comics. Go watch Beautiful Dogs on Netflix. He's just so funny, man. Like he's uh, he's almost like I'd describe him as a bit. He's a bit like a jock. Yeah, but but he's like a bit fat. But you, but he's just he's funny. He's relatable because he's a bit out of shape. Yeah, and he's just making jokes about. Um, it sort of opened my mind a bit. Like he makes jokes about the fact that his dad is uh, would be like a Democrat, like a bit more right wing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and I was always thought like because when you're on the comedy scene it's a very sort of left wing quite woke circuit and community right? right so i'd never really talk about the fact that my mum and dad read daily mail that they voted brexit because i'm like whoa you know i know that people would probably think wrong of me and probably think do, do you see what yeah, i mean of course I do. and i think i want to get on here and also i know i personally don't give a fuck about all that and i i'm i'm really open to everyone you know none of so I, I didn't want people to judge me for that so i'd never really talk about that stuff in my set and after i watched shane gillis i'm like well why can't i talk that stuff is funny and also also makes me quite unique in the fact that yeah there ain't many comedians out there that have got that come from our sort of world you know that sort of like well Essex for one, but that very much sort of Daily Mail reading. Yeah. Uh, love Nigel <laughs> Farage. Daily Mail reading is a demographic. Do you see what <laughs> I mean? You know, like the OSB's prime example. Yeah, 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 of course. Mate, look, if you can find the funny in it, it's funny. Yeah. And I, I, when I meet a lot of acts, I'm like, oh, you've not really grown up in that environment where it's like yeah. that sort of Brexit culture, as I would describe it. So you're saying you got that from watching I would Shane say he, he gave me the confidence to think... You can talk about that as long as you make it funny and also as long as you show people that really you're not on any of their sides. Yeah, yeah. You know, course. like I don't get up there and say, Yeah, you know, we need to cut illegal immigration, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I might just take I might, I might do talk. Say it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'll bring those characters yeah, to life difference. on stage. I'm not giving my opinion. Really, the truth be told. I do not give a fuck. Mm. As long as I'm all right, my family right, my friends are all right. I'm not getting caught up in all that politics stuff because I see now it makes you lot and you'll get twisted out of shape on it and you're spending all arguing and and really, how much do I know? Yeah, mate, that's why I don't get involved yeah, in politics. Yeah, exactly, it's, exactly. It's, it but he, I'm watching Shane Gillis. I was like, oh no, you can talk about those things. Mm. And um, yeah, he's just so funny, man. And he, he makes, really makes me laugh. Yeah, he makes me laugh. Really makes me laugh. Yeah, he's hilarious. He's got he's got some really funny jokes, mate. Uh, in the middle, I would have um, doing twenty minutes set. Right. Obviously, this is a non comedian. I'd have Donald Trump. <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> the man. Mate, he's so fun. I think American politics misses him, mate. Yeah, I mean, well, I don't think it does. But... No, but I'm saying from a comedic <laughs> standpoint. You need Donald Trump. It made it so entertaining. I was just so entertaining. This is what I'm saying to you. I know more about American politics than I do English Because every time he's getting up and talking so to the White funny. House, it was like him doing a special. But even, You're like, what's he going to come out with next? You know what I mean? But like between that and what Joe Biden's up to, just with the blunders he makes on a yeah. daily basis. You hear that the other day? He said his uncle got eaten by cannibals. Really? <laughs> he's lost the plot, mate. He's lost the plot. It's a show. It is a show. Do you know what's the funniest one? You ever see like Diane Abbott on LBC? Um, no. Oh, okay. Nick Ferrari, I think, does the morning. He's asking LBC, the radio. LBC, yeah. yeah he's yeah. asking her about like, um, oh, if you got into power, what would you do with the police, whatever? And she, she just getting the numbers so wrong. Yeah. And it's just funny. It's just funny to yeah, watch. Yeah, yeah, but and then all the, all saying the, the wrong stuff. All the memes off the back of it, mm. like, uh, <laughs> like, like the ones where she's wearing the odd shoes. <laughs> she's Avergers. just that confused yeah the verge just yeah. getting bare confused or the one that was really funny was her right with two cranes in the background and her saying I stand with you cranes <laughs> <laughs> so yeah 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 she Diane Abbott is short of like the Biden Trump of our like, okay she keeps saying stupid just, stuff just comes out of mad stuff <laughs> yeah. it's funny 
yeah, but yeah. yeah. I'd come. At, I'd, I'd get. I'd get uh, Donald Trump up there because you just don't know when he's being funny. It's like that. It's like that video I sent to you, where the, where he's like, "I did not have it easy. No, I did not have it easy growing up. Started out in business. My dad gave me a small loan of a million dollars. Started out in Brooklyn. Uh, it was not easy for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> he doesn't know that that's hilarious. No. Nah. A small loan of a million dollars. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't easy for me. My old man just give me a million quid to get started. Just, just fantastic. Just that's like no. Easy. No awareness whatsoever. Yeah. And that's, that's what's funny about it. Yeah, he's brilliant, mate. He's so funny. And when he does the debates, yeah, and he debates, like, in America, they all come out, the usual politicians come out with, like, like educated answers. Mm. He will just, like, take the piss out he of He roasts them. Yeah. And what about that one? One of his... Look at that wig on the top of your head. <laughs> yeah. Didn't he come out and he was debating someone and it was like, he put two people who this bloke had potentially. Oh no! So, had... so when he was debating Clinton's wife, yeah. Hillary Clinton, yeah, he had in the audience like some of the women that was accusing Clinton of like, yeah, 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 and, and put them in front of her. Yeah, <laughs> it's <so> brutal. <laughs> like, it's so good. Though. He's going Jerry Springer with his shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Change the game, really. Yeah, mate, that is so funny. So like... funny, yeah, so funny. Um, so yeah, and then headliner. Yeah. Um, so I've got Mo Gilligan hosting, Shane Gillis opening, Donald Trump. Um, headline, mate, there's so many headliners that I could think of. Uh, I could think of Mickey Flanagan, fantastic. I thought you were going to go British. Yeah, I think I'll go British. But I think the best, going back to what we were saying before, I think the best British comedian... I do think he's Kevin Bridges. Okay, and I would have him headlining. Yeah, he's fantastic. Mate. One of our one of our mates actually who, who signed up with UTC, I think, was supporting uh, Kevin Bridges recently. Um, so yeah, I'd have I'd have uh, Kevin Bridges headlining, uh, and that would be yeah, that would be my. I mean, I probably stand-up. I probably would have gone Chappelle headlining, but I didn't want to. No, you kind of the same as me, mate. It's kind cheating. of the same as you, yeah. Um, yeah, should we read some messages out from listeners? What you got for me, bro? Yeah, let's have a look. I think um, I've got some as well. So I've got a, quite a nice one actually for you. Um, here oh, we I go. Love, I love this one, by the way. Just quickly, this popped up. You're always wearing nice clobber white boy. Can you do a mention of what you're wearing? Love the podcast as always. Really? Love that. Yeah. What are, what are, what are you wearing today, mate? Maybe you want to talk us through your outfit? Um, Arnie Clo trainers. Arnie Clo trainers. These are some generic Amazon brand. Oh, are they? Uh, strides. That's when you know you've become a dad when you're buying clothes off of Amazon. Yeah, yeah you know what it is? Because I'm a really awkward... <laughs> so I need 30, Big and tall. 33 waist, 36 leg. Heavy's so you... on the hill. Is what? Do you remember what we were talking <laughs> Mate, <laughs> sorry. In a previous Heavy's episode, right? I've been meaning to say to you for weeks, we were talking about there was a shop in Harold Hill, right? That was for people that were really tall and really fat. Yeah, I thought it was called High and Mighty. And we, was, we basically said, it's a bit mean, but we said it's for the monsters. Yeah. But it was called, we thought it was called Big and Tall. It was called Heavies on the Hill. How horrible is that? Mate, Heavies on the Hill sounds like a Wu Tang album. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's that, you wouldn't get away with that now, Heavies on the Hill. Nah, they had, a, they had a They had another branch in Chelmsford, which was called uh, Chubbies in Chelmsford. They Chubbies had one in, in the Chelm. They had uh, one in Wanstead, which was called Wales in Wanstead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then uh, there was one in Maidstone, wasn't there? Did you know about that one? It's called Your Mum in Maidstone. <laughs> So uh, yeah, so this one is. I didn't from... finish off my outfit. Uh, sorry, mate. Okay, sorry, sorry. Go on. These t-shirts are from a company called True Classics. <laughs> okay. Right. It's a proper dad. Uh... No, 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 no. So True Classics are doing big on Instagram at the minute. Right. right. Okay. Basically, they are the way they fit. They're tight around the arms, tighter across the shoulders, but they're a little bit looser around the belly. For the belly. Perfect for you, actually, bro. Cover them love handles. Oh, he went there. Start sending from my Amazon. He went strides, there. You know what I mean? Jeez. And uh, this is a little Hugo Boss piece. So yeah, come on. Nice. Yeah, Hugo Boss is nice. You throw a little brand on top. You know Go I mean? throw a little brand on top. Yeah. So first message from Sarah Tatum. Cousin Chris. Yes, my cousin. Yeah. The one who lives in South Africa. Shout out all my South African uh, family. Cousin Chris, just listen to your latest podcast that you ever. And that you have a listener in Germany. You also have two listeners in South Africa. 
Nick now goes around and calls everyone geezers. <laughs> <laughs> That's our fella. Love the South Africans. Is yeah, he yeah. A, is he a South, uh, South oh, mate, African? So he yeah. comes from like a real um, noble family in South Africa, like old, old money. Really? Yeah. He Not went... the Mandela's, is it? <laughs> no? I don't know any other it's South not Africans. The Mandela's. No, no, he's a white man. Oh, um, okay. They, he went to like the poshest boarding school in Ooh, South Africa. Like he's actually boy. on the radio. Is he? Yeah, he's like a sports broadcaster. Oh, nice. Yeah, mate, does the cricket and the rugby. Oh, nice. Yeah, mate, shout out Nick. Shout out shout Nick. Shout out Sarah, shout out Uncle Linda. Oh, well, hopefully, maybe, Luke. listen, one day we might do a little South Did African trip. Did I say trip. Uncle Linda? Uncle. I meant Auntie Linda. Sorry, Auntie Linda. Linda. <laughs> Auntie oh. Linda, shout out Luke. Yeah, so, um, yeah, she says hello, mate. Um, loving the podcast. This is from Lucy Ruston. I hope I pronounced that second name right, Lucy. Uh, loving the podcast from a South End girl who's been living in Spain for over 20 years. You remind me of the chat back home. Mm. You both crack me up and I don't miss an episode. Oh. Fantastic. Really appreciate that. At we get a lot of this. Yeah, we get a lot of this, yeah. People moving away. And listening to the podcast because it reminds them of home. So yeah. I'm glad we could be of service. I know that we get a lot of people living in America um, that, yeah, that say that it just reminds them of home. Mm. Which is quite nice because we didn't, we didn't really, that wasn't really our, our goal before we set out, was it? But no. I suppose, I mean, it is, we are quite of our, we're quite, yeah, we're very English as we've said, yeah, before. So Geysers. Geysers. Um, what else you got for me? Big love, boys. This is from Jack Benstead. Big love, boys. Pod was great. Giving us a bit of home while we are living in Sydney. There Keep you go. them coming. That is from Jack and Sam. Big up, Jack and Sam. Big up, Jack. Big up, Sam. Hope you're getting on all all good in and in Australia. I hope you're staying in shape because from what you tell me, if you're not in shape in Australia, then you're not nicking any of the birds. You're literally a or, nobody. Or the blokes, if you're into you're, that. You're a nobody. So... Yeah, uh, we got some questions though. I've put some questions out to the listeners. Oh, actually, oh, nice. no, I've got to read this one. Oh, can you read that one? This is one. So this first question, right, was from Millwall Scott. Obviously, we spoke Millwall Scott. He wanted some advice in a previous episode, didn't he, about plating his Mrs. Bumhole? Oh, okay. And you give him a couple of pointers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Hang have on. you got legs? I can't open the uh, email. Millwall Scott again. Didn't realise the wording was capped when asked a question from your story. As I've been watching the Josh James show since day one, I've come to learn James's mannerisms. When you spoke about Mickey F, he does this thing with his eyes and tilts his head when he can't pass information. See, what's that mean? I don't know. I'm gonna put it out there. I think that James is going to support Mickey Flanagan in the not so distant future. If this is true, can I have a couple of tickets, please? Well, mate, I'd, that'd be, I'd love that. Well, but... I think what he's trying to say is that You've got like a poker tell when poker you talk tell. about Mickey Flanagan. So basically, a poker tell, James. I can't believe you don't know what this is. Poker when tell. you're playing poker, if you're bluffing, maybe like your eye will twitch or like you'll do something. Yeah. And they know you're bluffing because you've got a tell. You've done something that makes them know that you're not telling the truth. So he thinks when you're talking about Mickey Flanagan, you've got a tell. And it's like you do something. So he thinks you're going to be warming up for him soon. Oh, really? Yeah, that, I think that's what you think. Okay, thinks. interesting. Yeah. You've got to be voting for the truth. I mean, yeah, I'd love to. Of course, I'd love to. Um, you know, one of my one of my heroes. So Yeah, legend. Uh, yeah, but mate, if I ever do, message me again. And he basically I will get said, tickets. can I have a couple of tickets for being a lifetime member of the Josh James show? Of course you can. Of yeah, course you can, I mean, but we've got nothing. I've got nothing booked in for him at the moment. But if yeah, that changes, sorry, mate, Mill I will. Spot. I will let you know. So this is from Ed Killing. I know he's a big listener of the show. Big up, Ed. Hello, Ed. The boys love a nickname. Who's got the best nickname? You know, and why? You know what I really liked earlier on, when you're saying that I've, I'm really wise, and we're thinking about changing my name to Wise Boy. Wise Boy. Um, I think White Boys. A, that's a fantastic nickname. It's a pretty good nickname. I mean, the Shermanate is pretty good. Shermanate is good, but ones that we use in real life. Um, so who you got? Well, we've got a friend of mine called Ginge, mm. and it, it sums him up perfectly. And he's always been Ginge, and all the mum and dads call him Ginge. But the funny thing is now, he's gone completely bald. Yeah. So you wouldn't even know he's Ginger. I call him GT. GT. Yeah, which is the initials of Ginger Tone. <laughs> that's not his... <laughs> so, yeah. So that's I, not his name. So, actually, we call him Ginger now, but for years, people would just know him as Ginger Tone. Yeah. 
Ginger Tone. And you'd be like, right, Ginger Tone. So I, I think his initials are GT. GC, really, they're TK. Yeah, yeah. But that, <laughs> that's neither here nor there. I didn't even think of that. Yeah, yeah, GT. I don't even Ginger think of his tone. second name. Ginger Tone, yeah. Yeah. Ginger Tone's got to be a really good one, I think. Yeah, Ginger Tone's fantastic, mate. Yeah. Really does sum him up. What a legend. Um, when's the next, next live show, lads? That's from Alex Hockley. Soon, hopefully. Yeah, we're going to get something booked in for sure. I would like to do one summer, one winter. Yeah, one summer, one winter. That would be good. Jack Kenningham. And I've had this a few times, people asking for this. When's the That Josh James Show charity golf day happening? All over it. You need to swing a golf club first. Yeah. Look, Jack, I was trying to persuade Jamesy to start playing golf on the way up here. And we had a little bit of headway. First of all, you said, no, 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 no. And I was like, mate, you need to start playing golf. And he said... I probably do, don't I? So yeah. that's the first time you've ever sort of been even slightly inclined we, to, the, to the possibility of it happening. Let's book in a little night, Rain just session. me and you, we'll go top golf, and you can film how bad I am, and then you'll see why I don't really play. I think you're going to be good. Right. I think you're going to be better than you give yourself credit for. I thought you was an athlete. I am an athlete, Have yeah. you got hand-eye coordination? I've got great hand-eye coordination. Well, then you should be good at golf. Yeah, maybe. Maybe, we'll see. Um, Callum Vitaro. Oh, I don't, mate. I fit, Callum. Fuck. Callum Vitaro. Vitaro? Sorry, mate. I fucking butchered your second name there. How was Eddie Hearn? How was Eddie Hearn? It, Eddie Hearn was good. Yeah, I Eddie, love the sketch, by the way. It was fun. Yeah. And I've got to give a shout out to the Shermanator, because if you watch the full sketch on the Dizone app, right, uh, there is a joke there where Eddie Hearn asks for the time, and I say 22, and he goes, 22 what? And I pull up my Rolex, and I go, 22 grand bush. Yeah. I actually got that from the Sherman. You've got to give him the writing credit. Yeah. I sent it to him straight away. I was like, yeah. listen, mate, just want to let you know. White <laughs> boy told me about this the day before. I was like, I've got to use it. Yeah. Tell us the story about the Sherman when he used that. So he's out and about. So he's just, he was a lively geezer. He always, he'd be like this. So he'd be like, feel that. Like, you know what that is? Boyfriend material. Boyfriend material. Yeah. Right. So that was the thing. And then he was wearing this Louis Polo shirt once. Yeah. And his birds come over. He's like, feel that. She was like, Oh, what is it? Boyfriend material was that? No, it's Louis material. <laughs> <laughs> That's the sort of stuff that he was saying. Oh, and he was like, yeah. someone said, what's the time? And he went, 22. And he's gone, 22, what? He's like, 22 grand you can't. <laughs> <laughs> Which is hilarious, right? The watch was actually 22 grand as well. Like, I'll back him on that. We drove up to Manchester to buy it, me and him. So when I told you that, when I saw it in the sketch, I was like, mate, he is going to yeah. love that. Yeah. Just, and, and he did. Just funny. Yeah. Just a proper flash funny cunt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, it's, I shouldn't say the word. It's Seymour. exactly what he is. But yeah, just, uh, I mean, a lot of some people call it obnoxious. Yeah, but he's not, he's not being that serious. He he doesn't take himself that seriously. At the end of the day, he's a builder. So yeah. it's, it's sort of, it's like, it's like Harry Enfield's character, loads of money. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, he he's, doesn't take himself that seriously. No, he, he don't he take can, himself he can take that serious. Yeah, yeah, he can massive take. Yeah. And I've got to say, listen, as uh, people will know, you know, we've had a potential lawsuit nearly filed against us on this show yeah. uh, through something very minimal. Um, and it made me really appreciate the Shermanator because yeah. I'm like, we talk about him time and time again on this show and the OSB and they just embrace it. Well, it just goes to show the two levels of people that we're talking about. Well, it just goes to show it's a different type of man, isn't it? Really? Yeah, yeah. A man that can really have a laugh. Yeah. Rather than a little sort of wee Little weasel, yeah, yeah. <laughs> weasel of a man. Yeah. Couldn't describe it better, mate. You're a, co a complete weasel. Like, so here we go. So we was talking about the Shermanator the other day, and I'm like, you know what? Let me get that cleared before I play it. I spoke to him, and he was like, oh, bang on. What was it? You know what I mean? Like, just buzz him. <laughs> he for loves it. it. Yeah. 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 He absolutely loves it. And one thing I would say about the Shermanator listen, if 2023 was the year of the OSB, 2024 is the year of the Shermanator. I mentioned this. A lot thing. of people been saying, when are you going to get the Shermanator on the pod, boys? I think it could be another Christmas he could, special. He could be the new OSB. Let us know in the comments, should we get the Shermanator on for the Christmas special? All year? I'm saying is OSB, the Shermanator, he's coming for your throne. Yeah. With him and his 22 grand watch. He really is. Um, Rossi Smith, not a question, but loving the pod. Been listening since day one and still enjoying. Also, great to see you in the gym on Sunday. Big yourself up, Ross. Uh, see him in the boxing gym. Uh, he laughed about the chemo. Chelmo. Okay. The bar call. Yeah. He went, fucking hell, mate. I thought you went proper dark with that. I was like, no, no, I just done it because I'm, I'm an yeah, idiot, yeah. you know. But yeah, I hope you had a good session, Ross. 
Um, Spencer Feltham, is there a more violent individual than Pat Tate? <laughs> so see this Pat Tate that's on the Insta. Yeah, he's on the foot soldier. Yeah, no, but it's on the Instagram, on our Instagram. Yeah, yeah. Always comments. Always comments. Is that actual Pat Tate? It's not, but no, Pat Tate's dead, mate. You gotta, so, no, but <laughs> what I'm saying is... Got a shotgun. All right. I, was, I thought it was the actor. No. That I is, don't know uh, anything about this. That's Craig Fairbrass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not Pat that Tate actual guy. It's like, a, it's like a parody account. In right, yeah, in Rise of the <laughs> Foot Soldier. Okay. He always, yeah, that, that Pat Tate account always comments on our... Feed. Always? Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> he knows that... <laughs> We're target audience. Literally, mate. Every time something gets posted, he's on it. He's on it, yeah. yeah. No, I'd love, love to know who's in control of that account. Uh, Giuseppe Mella wants to know, how many autographs has White Boy signed now? Um, so the first autograph I ever signed was for Ryan Oaks. Shout out, Oaksy. Signed his driver head cover yeah. on the golf course. And I think I've signed one other. Do you know so what, two. though? Do you know what's the modern day autograph is the photo? Of course it is. So people want a photo now instead of an autograph, don't they? Yeah, I think I've I think I've been asked to maybe take like ten photos in my really? whole life. Yeah, love that. Yeah. And anywhere which has not been like at the live show or no, only the, at the live shows. Yeah, yeah. I remember this geezer once came to me in Shenfield and was like, "Oh, yours." He wanted to get a photo with me, and I was like, "But it, he didn't know what my name was." Uh, he was like, okay. "Oh, you're the geezer that does the bugger to Bishop's Gate, mate. Can I get a photo?" I was like. If you're like, oh, you're Josh, blah, blah, blah. Hang on a minute. What, you've got stipulations? No, no, no. I weren't, no, I weren't, I weren't mugging him off as if to say, no, nah, mate, come along. You don't no even photos. know I am probably. No, the, re the reason I said, I went, no, you don't want to photo with me because you, you, don't re you don't even know who I am. I don't know, Jamesy. I think you should have had the photo. No, I, I, I sort of batted it off like, mate, you don't want to photo with me. I'm not a fucking celebrity. I'm not famous. Mm. You know, you don't even know what my name is. It's just proof that I'm not, you know what I mean? I'm not worthy of getting a photo if with me. If anyone said they wanted a photo with me, I would jump yeah. all over it, bro. <laughs> yeah. I would love it. Yeah. Well, there you go. I would absolutely love um, it. But uh, I think that's out. That's done for another, another, uh, another episode, up. mate. What they got to do on the... Um, oh, actually, before that, can I just tell you about some of my dates, guys? Uh, to I've got some work in progress dates. Uh, 24th of May in Camden. 26th of May in Cambridge. Uh, not a lot of tickets sold for that one, so... On Cambridge. Then 26th of July in Brighton. That's nearly sold out. The Camden one's nearly sold out, but should still be plenty for the Cambridge one if you want to see me there. Um, yeah, what they got doing on YouTube, mate? Go to We Are L17's YouTube channel. That's where this podcast lives. Like the video if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel. Leave us a comment. And if you never want to miss an episode, hit the bell icon. Lovely stuff. And raise five stars on Spotify, five stars on Apple Podcasts. We always like reading your reviews on there. Keep sending your friends and family. And we'll see you all next week. Arrivederci. Goodbye.